Good day, students. In the last video, we showed you that um, a very effective way to solve quadratic equations is by using the graph of the quadratic equation. We're now going to show you how to solve quadratic equations using algebra. It turns out there's a number of ways of doing it. We're not going to cover all of them in year nine, um, but we are going to cover uh, some, some of the most common ones. OK, now it turns out there's a lovely little rule called the null factor law, which is very, very useful for solving quadratic equations. And in fact, you can use it to solve other types of equations you'll come across in your future math courses. So to start, just have a look at this question here. There are two numbers, a and b, that multiply to give 6. What might the numbers be? Well, if you had a bit of a class discussion about that, you could say, you know, 1 times 6, um, 2 times 3. But of course, we're not confined to whole numbers. You could have some negative numbers. You could have negative 1 times negative 6. You could have fractions, for example, 1 half times 12. You could have decimals, 0 0.1 times 60, etc. So in other words, there's an infinite number of possible solutions. A can, can in fact be any number, and then you can work out what B has to be to give you a product equal to 6. Now, it gets a bit more interesting when you look at this question. There are two numbers, A and B, that multiply to give 0. What might the numbers be? So again, you might think that there's a lot of choices here. But it turns out, when you think about it, the only way you can multiply two numbers and get 0 as the answer is if one of the numbers is 0 and the other the other number then can be anything. So if two numbers multiply to give 0, one of the numbers has to be 0, or of course they could both be 0. And that effectively is the null factor law. In words, if the product of two or more numbers is 0, then at least one of the numbers must be 0. Algebraically, if a times b is 0, then either a is 0, b is 0, or they're both equal to 0. And it turns out this is exceptionally useful for solving quadratic equations. OK, let's have a look at how we do it. <clears throat> Oops, I think I've gone too far. OK, solve the following equations using the null factor law. So what we have here is two expressions multiplied together to give us 0. So let's call that first one a and that second expression b. So a and b don't have to be numbers or just variables. They can actually be entire expressions. So here we have a times b equals 0. So because of that, we can say, well, either a is 0, in other words, x is 0, or b is 0. In other words, x plus 3 is 0. So one of those two expressions must equal 0 for the whole expression to equal 0. Well, that's already one solution. And for this one, of course, we solve that simple little one-step equation. Um, those subtract out. And that leaves us with x equals negative 3. That solution we already had, so we just copy it down. x equals 0. And there's the answer. If x times x plus 3 equals 0, either x is 0 or x is negative 3. OK, let's have a look at um, a second example. OK, here we have x take 1 in brackets all squared equals 0. So what you might want to do is just write that out in expanded form to make it look like a times b. So I can write it out like so. And we have x minus 1 times x minus 1 equals 0. So that's a. That's b. So it turns out in this case, a and b are the same thing, which there's nothing wrong with that. So I can say, well, either a is 0 or b is 0. But because they're the same thing, I'm only going to write it out once. So I'm just going to write, therefore, a take 1 
sorry, excuse me, x take 1 equals 0. And therefore, for that to be true, x equals 1. So in this case, we only have one solution to that quadratic equation, x equals 1. Okay, why don't you uh, stop the video, please, and have a go with the next two questions. Okay, students, welcome back. Well, let's see how you went. So here we have an expression A. Here we have the expression B. And the null factor law says A times B is 0. So therefore, x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 is 0. One of those two factors has to equal 0. Solving that equation, subtract 3 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 3. And sub, um, add 2 to both sides, we get x equals 2. And there's our two solutions to that quadratic equation. Okay, the last one on this page. That's A. That's B. The null factor law says A times B is 0. My pen was playing up there, so let me make that a bit more neat. So once again, we can say either 2x take 1 equals 0 or x take 5 equals 0. Okay, this one's going to require two steps to solve. So first we add 1 to both sides, and minus 1 plus 1 goes to 0. So 2x equals 1. Divide both sides by 2. And one solution is x equals the fraction 1 half. And for the second solution, we add 5 to both sides. And we end up with x equals 5. So the two solutions for that is x equals a half or x equals 5. Okay, I think I might stop just there. And we'll move on in the next video and continue to solve quadratic equations using the null factor law.